All right, well, good morning. If you can hear me out in the foyer, uh, if you go ahead and start making your way in this morning. Uh, we're glad that you all are here, enjoying this beautiful uh, weather in uh, January. I guess it's still January, right, for at least another day or two. Um, but uh, we're glad that you're here this morning. Welcome to Norton Christian Church. Um, I did have one, uh, one thing to announce as we start here. It is uh, Brianna Renner's birthday today, so happy birthday. Yeah. You're still young enough that we're not going to ask you how much, you know, how old. So do we have any other birthdays or any anniversaries or anything? All right. Nobody wants to say it. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, welcome. We're glad that you're here this morning. Um, we will uh, start going through a few announcements as you make your way in today. Um, we do have a couple of short videos this morning that we'll show as well. Um, elders and deacons, if you haven't had your picture taken or would like a retake, <laughs> or if somebody has told you that you need to take a retake um, for the website, please, uh, please get with Heather to take those pictures. Also, so uh, Divorce Care is one of the care ministries that we're starting here. Uh, it will begin on February 20th, uh, which is uh, just in a few weeks here and Sunday afternoon here at the church. Uh, we will have a short meeting after this service. In the Covatus room, if you're interested uh, in looking into that ministry, um, and we're also going to show, show a short video. So uh, go ahead, Dan. You can talk about divorce with your friends and your family, but until they've gone through it, they don't get it. I don't know who I am anymore. I was so angry, so bitter. I feel like I did all the right things. Why me? A divorce can be a traumatic and isolating experience. But there is hope. Divorce Care is a video-based support group that helps you heal from the pain of separation or divorce. You are there with a group of people who are going through the same thing, and it really touches you. It really helped me to stay grounded. It actually is 100% effective on changing your life. Okay, so if you're interested in uh, looking into that, uh, we'll meet. Uh, like I said, after this service, uh, Steve Vance and Joanne Hill will be leading that. Um, and so, yep, Embrace Grace will be the next thing here. Uh, there's a baby shower Saturday, February 5th at 1 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. And I realized, first service, that January 25th has already happened. But she, uh, Ashley said, uh, you're more than welcome to still come get a hold of her um, and get RSVP'd for that. Uh, Grief Share is an, another care ministry that we're going to be starting also on February 20th, uh, Sunday, February 20th here at the church. Um, and we'll have an informational meeting next Sunday uh, before bo or after both services, uh, after first service in the library and after second service in the Covatus. Uh, if you've lost somebody um, and would like to be uh, come and, and share with us with that, um, we'd love to have you. Um, so come to that meeting next week if you're interested. Um, the, uh, they're having a murder mystery for uh, the youth group. Um, and I said in first service, I'm still trying to not use my pirate voice, um, but they're, it's called Murder Among the Mateys. So if you're interested in that, our, um, it's Sunday, February 6th at uh, 5 p.m. here at the church. Get a hold of Evan if you're interested, because you've got to get your character, and you've got to get into character. Do this right. Uh, fellowship dinner uh, will be Sunday, February 13th um, after second service. Um, the youth versus adult football game will be on Sunday, February 13th at 2 p.m. at the practice field, uh, Super Bowl Sunday. So if you'd like to get involved with that, uh, kids versus adults, uh, we always, maybe we should have an ambulance on hand for the adults. Uh, anyway, so I'm on injured reserve, so I'll be reffing, so I'll be starting to take, you know, bribes or something, but, um, yeah. Never. That's right. We, we, we don't lose the game, but we lose physically. <laughs> uh, okay, so the financial piece, uh, Brand's going to come up and talk about that. Oh, high school speech class, don't fail me now. We can do it. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. The second leading cause of divorce in America today is money troubles. How's that for an intro? It's right behind infidelity. Eight out of 10 families in the US live paycheck to paycheck. 
The average consumer debt in America is $34,055, and that's not including their mortgage. I share these stats with you, not to scare you, but to just get your attention. Church, we have classes for marriage, we have classes for parenting, we go to seminars, we go to uh, different camps and retreats and all have their purpose and all serve you know, to glorify God. But when's the last time we've talked about money? Um, it's a very important subject. Um, and I feel like as, as believers, we are called to be good stewards of God's money. It is not your money, it is God's money. So starting Tuesday, February 22nd, we'll be offering Financial Peace University. Um, it's a nine-week program. We just meet once a week for under two hours on uh, Tuesday nights. Um, in this program, you'll learn how to create a detailed budget. Um, you'll learn the most effective way to get out of debt, how to save for emergencies, and how to plan for your family's future. Over six million families have learned how to become debt-free and to win with money using this program. The average family who goes through Financial Peace University pays off $5,300 in debt and saves $2,700 for emergencies in just the first 90 days of following this program. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's what they say is uh, God and Grandma's way of handling finances. If you have any questions or feel like God's calling you to sign up, please talk to me um, after the service. I'll be in the lobby. Uh, we'll be happy to get you registered. Um, it's a month away, so you have a little bit of time. You can talk about it. Um, it is $60. The church or myself don't get paid anything. It's just for the materials. You'll get access to all the videos and all the online resources. Um, so it's $60. But if that's something that's hindering you from joining, uh, just talk with me, and uh, there's some scholarship opportunities available. Um, I'll just close with Proverbs 3, 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Thanks. Thanks, Brant. If you want to get signed up for that, please do get with him. Starting February 22nd. Um, Women's Praise Hour will be uh, Tuesday, February 22nd, 7 p.m. It's at the Church of God this month. Month we rotate between here and uh, that church. Um, right now, media, if you have not signed up for that and you would like to, it is free to you uh, through this through the Norton Christian Church. Um, lots of Bible studies, lots of uh, kids' uh, videos and different things. So uh, please get a hold of us if you would like to get that. The connections cards are in your bulletins. Please do fill those out and uh, put them in the basket in the back. Um, my name is Garrett Rowland. Uh, if you are interested in getting into a small group or being more involved, uh, a church, or if you have you a, a ministry idea you'd like that God put on your heart, you'd like to visit about, please come talk to me at the church uh, or at NCC Connections at Ruletel.net. Uh, Evan Brandt is our youth minister, and Nate Hagen is our senior minister. Before we get into the scripture reading uh, today, we do have a, a prayer request this morning. We're going to pray for uh, just real quick. Uh, Marilyn Collins, they called this morning and said she'd been taken to the hospital this week, and uh, she's not doing very good. Um, so. Uh, if you would if we'd, uh, pray with me uh, for Marilyn real quickly. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, you're our Father, and Lord, we love you. And uh, you are the, the author uh, of life and of peace and of love. And uh, Lord, we, just, uh, we do ask for, for healing for Marilyn. Uh, she's uh, in the hospital. And just for the doctors, uh, the care over, and for her family, that the, the peace that only you can give um, to them in this time. We do, we do pray for healing for her, um, and uh, Lord, everybody that is sick and is in the hospital and, uh, right now. So, uh, Lord, we lift her up to you, and uh, Lord, we thank you for who you are. We ask all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Um, okay, so the scripture reading today uh, is from Joshua 1, and 6 through 9. So if you please stand with me for the reading of God's word. And this is uh, God talking to Joshua after Moses uh, has died uh, to tell him what to do. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to the possess, possess the land that I swore to their ancestors I would give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. 
Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it daily, daily and nightly, so you will be sure uh, to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my commandment. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Let's join together and lift our voices this morning in some song. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. With all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all that I have, I will sing that everything that has Praise the Lord. So there's a river. There is a river that flows unrestrained from your heart. Opinions of mercy so deep I can never depart. It. Father, your wonders are in. still believe, awake my soul.
beautiful day. It's a winter day, but it's also your day, and that's what makes it yours. Dear God, I ask that you quiet our souls, that you bring us closer to you by way of song, by way of listening, by way of fellowship and communion, and all these other opportunities that we have been given. And I ask that you Allow these words to flow through us. Allow us to direct them to you. Savior, I come. Quiet my soul. Remember. Redemption's hill. Where your blood was spilled. Everything I once held dear, I count it all as lost. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. And rid me of myself, I belong. Bring me to 
Well, good morning. Before I get my meditation, I was met some people I hadn't seen here in a few years. My former Sunday school teachers, it's been 20 some years, are here today. So I'd like to say welcome to Todd and Mary Strayer. And I thank you guys for putting up with me back in high school. I hope I changed and grown, but I can't guarantee it either. But with that, as I think about that, to all of our Sunday school teachers, thank you for your time that you put into to kids, the effort that has, and the impact that you do have. Aren't, you don't realize it at the time, but it is appreciated. So thank you to the Strayers. Um, meditation kind of came across my mind as working with some guilt. And however, have you ever felt so guilty that you couldn't look somebody in the eye? I remember Bar Barney calling me over a few years ago and just said, Brad, do you know anything about this? And my head just went down. Couldn't look him in the eye for that. It's, guilt can be very motivating. While the possibility of feeling guilty may not stop us from doing something wrong, we'll try and do anything to prevent it. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of the famed fictitious detective Sherlock Holmes, once played a very nasty trick on people. He wrote an unsigned letter and mailed it to 12 individuals in the community. It said, all is discovered, flee at once. Within 48 hours, all 12 of those men had left the country. Hmm, guilty. Though people in our so the society rarely use the word sin in conversation anymore, we can't get rid of guilt. It has a powerful effect on us. Guilt weakens and destroys. It can create a sense of anxiety, a nameless unknown fear. It can produce depression that hangs over us like a dark cloud. It can make us feel unclean and worthless. It can give us a, sort, a self a poor self-image that we become our own worst enemy. Guilt can even create physical illness. After David's uh, sin with Bathsheba, it said, my groans grew old through the groaning all day long. There's a difference between guilt and guilt feelings. You may have bad feelings even though you're not guilty. Psychiatrists, they try and help you get rid of the guilt feelings, but they don't know how to handle the guilt. Many of them don't even like to use that word. They may use the words confused or mixed up instead. But the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And there is no one righteous, no, not one. Our guilt is so permanent it seems to be engraved in granite sometimes. We cannot blame it away. We cannot push it down or trade it for any other emotion. We can get rid of our guilt in only way, one way. And that's by asking God to forgive us. Do you need to ask for forgiveness for something today? <clears throat> Confess it to him and unburden your heart. Allow him to wash you perfectly clean. Allow him to get that weight off of your shoulders. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come here to you today at this time of communion. Lord, there are, are sins that we have and that are hard for us to struggle and to get rid of. We seem unworthy to be able to do that. Lord, we can try and read books and turn to others for help. Um, but Lord, there's only way to, one way to get rid of those sins, and that's to bring them here to you, lay them at the foot of the cross. Because of your sacrifice on the cross for us, our sins can be forgiven. Our sins can be washed and we can be turned white as snow because of that. Lord, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us. Thank you that you loved us so much. You're willing to do this. Lord, as we take these emblems of the blood, uh, the, the blood that's represented by the juice and the, the bread that represents your body, these were done on our behalf, your behalf, because you loved us so much. You want to spend eternity with us. Lord, thank you again, and may we take this time and leave these sins at the foot of the cross. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
would join me in praying for the offering. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this church that we can come here and, and worship you and learn about you, God. And Lord, I just pray that you'll bless this offering and use it to further your kingdom. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is the fifth Sunday, so we have a fifth Sunday offering. And today it goes to I National Disaster Emergency Service. Um, the IDES have five areas of focus. It's evangelism, disaster response, hunger relief, community development, and medical care. A lot of this offering will go to the tornadoes uh, to help the people that uh, were affected by the tornadoes that happened in December that hit the states of Kentucky, Arkansas, Illinois, Ohio, and Tennessee. We have a couple of videos about IDES that we'd like to share with you. We are IDES. International Disaster Emergency Service is a nonprofit meeting physical and spiritual needs of suffering people around the world in the name of Jesus. At IDES, we are eager to show Christ's love to those who are affected by disaster and other urgent needs. We help hurting people through five focus areas. We provide relief for disasters around the globe, working through global mission partners who serve as the hand and feet of Jesus, caring for those in need. We work with volunteers and local churches to clean up communities and repair damaged homes, both internationally and domestically. Whether a hurricane, tornado, flood, or other type of disaster, IDES is quick to respond, providing funds and leading volunteers to meet critical needs in the name of Jesus. Volunteers working in affected areas muck out and repair homes, remove fallen trees, tarp roofs, and build sheds, all with the heart of showing the love of Jesus. We ensure there is nutritious food for those who do not have enough to eat and work with food pantries and do large-scale food distributions. Working with local partners, we provide meals and staple foods to those who are hungry while also nourishing their souls with the hope that can be found only in Jesus. Our GAP food packing program also allows volunteers to share God's love as they participate in meal packing events. GAP meals are then shipped to our global partners who distribute them to those who are malnourished. Our community development efforts give people the tools they need to create a better future for themselves and their families. Well drilling, livestock distribution, agricultural supplies, and vocational training are frequent examples of community development projects. Many people around the world do not have access to essential medical care. IDES is committed to providing our mission partners with medications, equipment, and other resources which help them care for many thousands of patients each year. These areas of focus are centered around evangelism. Disasters and other hardships are never welcome, but they create powerful opportunities for God's people to live out His transforming love in this hurting world. IDES is motivated by Jesus' call to love your neighbor as yourself and his commission to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. The, the partnership that we have with IDES allows us to both meet the physical needs, but also the spiritual needs of people in desperate places. Some of the areas where we work, they're suffering civil wars, suffering from famines and droughts, and we ourselves don't have the ability to meet every one of those needs, but yet we can partner with a group like IDES. The donations that IDES receives empowers our workers on the ground to be able to do much more than they could ever do on their own. So we're really super thankful for our partnership with IDES. At IDES, we value the opportunity to partner with Christ followers just like you as we provide help and hope to those in need. Visit IDES.org today to learn about volunteer opportunities, partner with IDES, or see what God is doing around the world. Join us as we answer Jesus' call to change the world with his redeeming love. Are you ready? Our life is supposed to be a replication of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Tonight, entire neighborhoods in Bowling Green, Kentucky, unrecognizable. State leaders estimate 500 homes and at least 100 businesses were destroyed when an EF3 tornado tore through the town.
when Jesus saw that there was a problem, he took action. He stepped up. You know, Isaiah 6, 8 says, And the Lord said, Whom shall I send? And I said, Here am I, Lord, send me. For me, it's about wanting to take that action and, and be Jesus to the people that we have the opportunity to interact with today. When we uh, first made our left-hand turn onto Sherwood Avenue, it opened up with just piles of trees that had been cut down. A car was sitting in a house. One house would be devastated, the other house, the next house wouldn't be touched. What do people need here? They need a helping hand. They need an answer. Every time I stopped and had the opportunity to pray with somebody, I kid you not, other people from somewhere else, maybe people that I know, people that I don't know, they rushed over and they wrapped their arms around us and we all had the opportunity to meet with the Lord in that moment. That has probably been the most encouraging thing is number one, all the people out here together today, and number two, how on fire for the healing that everybody here has been so far. The opportunity to work with ITES has been, has been incredible. It seems like they're very plugged in, they have a desire to serve, and everybody that's been on the team today has been uh, hospitable, and generous with their time and their words, and has just been unrelenting in their desire to serve the people that need them. I guess the light doesn't work on it. Anyway, a uh, couple of announcements since we didn't have enough this morning. I'm just kidding. There is a Super Bowl party at my house on the 13th. Um, I believe it starts at 5. Um, if you do come, it's for high schoolers. Uh, make sure you eat something. There was way too much leftovers last year, and I don't have that much room in my fridge anymore. Um, if you have not given a packet for the murder mystery for the high school for next week, and you are coming to the murder mystery, please come find me, um, because you have to have a character, um, and we need you to have a character in order to act it out. It's going to be fun. It's pirate-themed. You're going to love it. And with, on that note, uh, we are dismissed for Kids Quest and uh, Extended Session. Sandy was in first service, and she gave that um, uh, thing on Ides, and I was trying to find, when I was a child, um, they, we started doing a mission in our church, the Sunfish. Have you heard of the Sunfish for Ides? So uh, I got this bright idea. In 1983, Ides started with Sunfish. They're little blue fish uh, of mom and pop started this. They owned a plastic company. And they started these sunfish because they decided that they wanted to help with the starvation around the world. And so you buy these sunfish, or actually you get them. Huh? They're banks. They're sunfish banks, plastic banks. And you fill them up, and then you send them in, they send you new ones. And uh, it helps with starving homeless. They started reading uh, where the five loaves and two fish, and so everybody does their little part. And that started in 1983. Here it is 30 some years later, and my hand is in the air, and I just looked this up. Around the world, for 25 cents, you could feed a child. So I am, we got Missions Madness coming up in March, and I'm going to see about ordering about, I don't know, three or 400 of these little banks. And in March, I don't see how many of these things we can fill and send to IDES for that. IDES is a real good program. 100% of the money you give to IDES goes to the mission. Like if we're giving money to um, the tornado victims, 100% of that money will go to that. And so this is a real good thing that we're doing here. So please help support that uh, if you would, please. All right, it is the fifth Sunday. This is the last Sunday of the month. Next month, we're going to go into February. Men, I'm going to give you a heads up. February 13th is the Sunday, uh, Super Bowl Sunday, if you forgot. <laughs> is there something else goes on in February? No, it's just Super Bowl. That's what I thought. It's just Super Bowl. All right. Um, uh, so 
I want us to do a recap of all the sermons that we've been going on. Some of your wives are leaning over going, you better not forget the 14th. I see you guys looking at that. Um, what I want us to do is a recap of the sermons that we've had, and we're going to go over the idea of the theme for the new year as we go forth. February, we're going to speak about love, and one of the sermons we're going to talk about next month is the idea of how you even love the people you hate. Now, if I were to say, do you hate anybody? You're, no, I don't hate anybody, and I'm going to go, sure you don't. But if I were to say, do you have some strong feelings against somebody in your life? Yeah, I do. So we're, one of the sermons we're going to talk about next month is how do you deal and how do you love someone that you have strong feelings against. But this month, today, what I want us to do is talk and, and wrap up the theme for the new year, and that's charging forward in faith. And, and one of the things that you're going to see, and the picture that you have there, is the idea that if you're going to take a stand, and being a Christian, if you're going to be a Christian, then that means that you've got to be willing to take a hit. Because you've got to stand up against evil in this world. That is a requirement of being a Christian. Now, my wife will tell you that there are some times that my tongue gets twisted and I might say the wrong thing or say it the wrong way. And, and I, I have tried all week, how do I say this the right way? And, and I, and I want to say this, and I'm going to ask you if you understand what I'm trying to say. Christianity is all-inclusive. Everyone is welcome to come. But conversion is expected. Does that make sense? No matter what you've committed, no matter what sin you've committed, I don't care what you've done, everyone is welcome at the foot of the cross. But you don't get to stay in your sin. Conversion is expected. Romans 3.23, for the wages of sin is death. All sin is forgiven by the blood of Christ. But you don't get to stay in your sin. Conversion is expected. In order for conversion to take place, there's going to be conflict. Because you've got to think about what you're reasoning and you've got to fight over your decision and you're going to rationalize what do I believe and even whenever it goes back all the way back to Jacob and Jacob had to wrestle with God there was conflict and, and I, I, one of the things I love about my job as being a, a preacher is, is standing up here and looking out there and watching people wrestling with God wrestling with their decision, what do I believe in Jesus Christ? What do I believe about what the preacher is saying? And you see God and the Holy Spirit working on them, and, and what am I going to believe? One thing I like about men's encounter, I, it's probably the same about women's encounter, I don't know, but it is that, that 100% three days of 100% intensity to where what are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with these facts? And sometimes you got to be willing to take the hit. Because out of your wrestling with God, out of your conversion, comes convictions. There are some things that you're going to say that I now, I know, I believe. Because whenever you become a Christian, one of the first things is your confession. I believe, I know for certainty that Jesus is the Christ, the living God. And I know the Word of God. I believe the Bible from the front to the back. I believe it, and I know it is essential. I must follow through. So today, if you're going to lead the way, there are some consequences that come along with that. I'm going to ask you, are you willing to take the hit? As we stand here in 2020, and, and I want you to know I've been reading, rereading a book that was written about uh, Diedrich Bonhoeffer. Maybe, maybe you don't know who that is, but back in the 1930s, he was a German theologian, and, and his dad actually was a doctor and wanted him to go down that path, but on his mother's side, there were, there were preachers and theologians, and he decided to go down that path, and he came over to America, and the thing that he was really disgruntled by was the fact that there was no theology in the churches in America. It was all fluff. The chapter I read yesterday was the idea that he went to church in New York, and, he, and in his diary he said 
The message today come from James, not the book, but some philosopher from New York. That was written in like 1937. If he were to visit the average church in America today, or if he were to flip on his TV, do you think he'd be impressed? We're going to go into 1 Timothy and we're going to wrap up everything we've talked about and, and try to rehash some of the things and, and what Timothy is, is to do and, and Paul gave Timothy a hard job and he sent him into this area and he says, here's what you've got to do. I want you to establish leadership and after you establish leadership, you've got to maintain the standard of teaching and maintain the standard of the doctrine in the church. You cannot lower that standard. Instead of lowering the standard, you raise the people up to that standard. We do not get or we do not have the right to lower the standard of the doctrine of the Bible. Our responsibility and our requirement is to keep the standard where it's at. And our job is to raise people up to that standard. They did a survey in 1992 when I was going to Bible college, and the survey was in that area, and they were looking at all the churches in the area, at what churches were growing and what churches were declining, and there was a vast difference in churches, and they were going in, and the churches that had decided to open themselves up to everything, and everything goes, and we're not going to hold anybody responsible for anything, and and whatever your private life is, is your private life, and, and God changed his mind on sin. Those churches were dying by 27%. And the churches that were holding a conservative view on sin and keeping things that were very conservative on, on, on marriage and on all these other things, those churches were growing by almost 34%. Because not only were the other people leaving the more liberal churches, but people in the world wanted to go to a church that had a standard. I had the privilege and the honor yesterday to be part of the a funeral procession. I joined the, the Legion Riders. Uh, I've got a Harley now. <clears throat> and I told Vicki, I said, you know, I want to be part of this. And what an honor. They wouldn't take me in the military. My dad said it was because I was too mean. My mom said, no, it's because of your left arm, you stupid. So, oh, okay. But yesterday I got to stand out and hold a flag in honor of a, of, a, of a war hero to me. That was an honor. And as I'm standing there, one of the guys next to me says, aren't you the preacher down at the Christian church? Yeah. Aren't you worried about being out here and what people might think of you standing out here and doing this? Nope. Why not? I support our military. I support our police officers. I'm not ashamed of them. And I'll stand out here every day. Because there's got to be a standard. And there's got to be somebody that is willing to raise that standard. And we've got to be those people. And that is what God is telling us to do. That if we're going to lead the way, you know what, we might take the hit. Here was what was going on during Timothy's time. It was apostasy. And it, this is the thing. It was from inside the church. And people that were inside the church, they had abandoned what they were used to be loyal to. There was a teaching going on and they had abandoned the teaching And here's what the apostasy was. They had rejected the deity and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they had rejected the true gospel message. The idea they had fallen away from a fixed position. Listen to 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. But the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will fall away from faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. That means hypocrisy of liars, seared in their own conscience as they're uh, branded with an iron. I want you to look at John 8, 31 real quick. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who believed in him, now these are people who had faith in him, if you continue in my word. I mean, there's a lot of people that had a good start. They had a real good start, but they didn't have a good finish. 
I, I just had finished, 20, in 26 days, I read 260 chapters. I finished the whole New Testament. I'm going to take a couple days off, let my eyes clear up, and I'm going to do it again in February. And I'm going to do it every month. And the thing that fascinated me was when you get into Revelation, you get into the last book, to them that stay faithful tell death. Not to those that lowered the standard. Not to those who... who Hit it good a couple times and missed. To those that stay faithful till death, to those he will give the crown. Those he will give the right to do. And he's saying here, when you fall away from the teaching, it causes you to fall away from the teacher. When you fall away, you're falling away from Christ. And he's telling us right here that we've got to stay faithful till the end. And here's what causes apostasy. Deceitful teachers. These people had a, had a motive, and their motive was financial. And, and they didn't even care. Their conscience was seared. And even if they didn't know it was true or not, they didn't care. It was for financial gain. One of the things we started off at the very beginning, be careful who you're listening to. And they were trying to say that no matter, no matter what you do, as long as you worry about the physical, that's all that matters. I, I remember growing up. How many of you remember this? You, you know, as long as you don't smoke, drink, or chew, or go with girls that do. Remember, remember some of you remember that. And you know, I'm a Christian. How do you know you're a Christian? Well, I don't do this, and I don't do that, and I don't do this. But what are you doing? And here is what he's saying in 1 Timothy chapter 4. For some of them forbid marriage, and they advocate the absence of certain foods, which God has created for, to be grateful for and shared by those who believe. And this is not true. And what they're telling them is, well, you just do certain things and don't do certain things, and you'll be okay. Me and a buddy of mine were, were laughing about a certain sect of believers and they they make their preachers abstain from getting married and and he says you know i can't wait till they get to heaven and they read that word is celebrate not celibate <laughs> i think that's kind of funny myself anyway he says here actions in the flesh affect the spirit but we don't do and not do certain things and that's not where we're saved by but what he's saying is what we're doing is what what we do and don't do is because of love a love for God. I'm going to do or not do certain things because of my love for Jesus Christ. I'm not going to do or not do certain things because of my love for my fellow man. And he's telling us right here that everything that has been given to us has been given to us by God. Look at verses 4 and 5. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. For it is uh, sanctified by means of the word and by means of prayer. We can know that God has given us things and that we are to be appreciative of those things. And it's a gift from God for three reasons. Number one, he wants to be thankful for it. And you know what's the best thing is about having gratitude? It's not God is enough for wanting pat on the back and God now, now say thank you. He's not holding it over our head. Now are you thankful for this? When we have gratitude for it, it blesses us. If we're thankful, then you have a thankful spirit. And when you walk around with gratitude, it changes your whole personality. Walk around a couple days and look at things with a thankful personality. Thank God for your meals. God, thank you that I'm sitting here with a meal. As you said, 25 cents will feed somebody overseas. I've seen what some of you eat. 25 cents ain't paying for that. Vic and I, when we went out to, to Mayo Clinic, we sat down and, and we went to Arby's that one time. It was 20 bucks for the two of us. I said, okay, the next stop, only one of us gets to eat. Gratitude and a grat grateful spirit is for our benefit. The next thing says... It has been blessed by his word. His word is telling us. Now, and here's the deal. God has blessed everything. But people have taken it and abused it. Sex inside a marriage is a wonderful thing. Beautiful thing. But they've abused it. Romans chapter 1 has said there's many diseases upon this earth because we've taken something that God has made beautiful. We've abused it. I believe, and I believe with all my heart, that God has given us plants. My grandmother could walk out into the woods and could boil or cook or scrape about any tree and fix any problem you had. There are many natural antibiotics and many natural medicines out in the woods. Do you know we went to... When we go on vacation, one of the things we did was, was take a nature walk with the naturalist. Do you know that the Indians used to scrape, I think it was willow bark, and make aspirin out of it? Uh, teas, we used to make uh, sassafras tea. 
Do you know it's a natural blood thinner? There's a lot of things in nature. Real marijuana is not the stuff that you go buy down the street. It's not the stuff that you go buy in that store. That stuff's all been chemically altered. Don't give me the crap that that stuff is all natural. Baloney. The natural stuff is what's growing in your backyard. You'd have to smoke a 50-acre field of that stuff to get high. Trust me, I've tried it. No, I haven't. That's a, that's a joke. That's, that's a joke. That's a joke. God has given us plants for medicine, but we've abused it. Everything is good, and, and you know, here's the deal. When you go at it with a grateful spirit, when you go at it and you look at it with the word of God, and you go at it and you're not going to abuse it, it's a good thing. Here's the other thing. When you go at it knowing the doctors prescribed it, and some of you are doing it yourself, but you don't have a PhD, and self-medication is not good. We've got to be careful, though, at the same time on the other coin, what we call false teachings. There's a lot of people throwing that out out there. Well, that's a false doctrine. That's a false teaching. And, and you know, I'm a member of the Ministerial Alliance, and I can get together with people of other beliefs at, at Christian churches as long as we have the foundational beliefs is the same. And here's the foundational beliefs. Jesus is the divine Son of God. I can believe that. The resurrection from the dead, that Jesus arose from the dead, and there's a day coming that I'm going to be able to, I can believe in that. That the salvation is by faith through grace. If you believe that, we're brothers in Christ. I can believe that. That, the, that Jesus returned to heaven, that there's a day coming. He's coming back for those who believe in him. We get to go to heaven. I can believe that. And we can work together. Do you know there are some that believe that you shouldn't have musical instruments in church? They're still my brother in Christ. There are some that, that instead of, you know, we baptize, that baptistry is ready right now. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, faith first. We've got a guy that's going to record and use this sermon later. I'm going to make sure he hears it. If you have faith first, baptism's ready. There are some churches that have a baptism Sunday. We can sit there and we can dispute it, but you know what? We're brothers in Christ. There's a story about a man who went to heaven, and he's in heaven. He's, he's walking around, and St. Peter's here, let me show you around. And he went to one area, and they're up there praising God and waving their hands. And who's that? Well, that's the Pentecostals. They're up there in heaven. Went to another church, and they're over there, you know, kneeling and bowing and squatting and kneeling. Who's that? Well, that's the Lutherans. They're up in heaven. And went to another area in church, and, and they're doing their thing. Well, who's that? Well, that's the so-and-so. They're up in church. And he went and went, shh, come here. And he sneaks over to a room, and there's a little nine-inch window. And they look in there, and it's a regular church service. Who's that? Huh, that's the Baptists. They think they're the only ones that made it. <laughs> There are some people who think they're going to make it that ain't going to make it. And if you believe these core values and if you believe the word of God, we can be brothers in Christ. Be very careful before you start throwing the word false teaching. What it might be is just immaturity. And it may just be immature. Here's what the Bible talks about false teachings. Go to Galatians 1, you want to know what false teachings are. Go to Romans 16, which people are being divisive and they're trying to split the church. Be careful about those people. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, where they're being grossly immoral and trying to lead people in immoral. These are the things that he's talking about. But we have a response for immaturity. What's immaturity? Use maturity. Treat them with maturity. Sometimes you've got to lead them gently. Ephesians chapter 4 said he gave us apostles. He gave us teachers. He gave us the leaders of the church. Why? So you can lead them into maturity and lead them up. Now here's the key for you guys today. If you're a Christian, you're a minister. Throughout the whole Bible, all the way back into Genesis, God used ordinary people and called them to do extraordinary things. He is calling us in 2022 to raise the standard. Do you realize that the gospel that we believe, the Jesus that we believe in, the word of God that we use today is over 2,000 years old? Do you know why we have that same gospel? Because men and women 
throughout the ages, kept it from the apostasy. And what Paul is talking about in 1 Timothy chapter 4, he talked through the church age, and throughout the church age, apostasy after apostasy has come up because Satan is going to try to knock the church down, and he's going to throw arrows at us and try to beat us down. But people have held the line, and we're not going to let it slip now. And the word that we use is over 2,000 years old. And it is as strong to save today as it was as strong to save then. It still has the power to save. It is still the blood of Jesus Christ that changes people. It is still the salvation message that is 2,000 years old. And we have the responsibility to pass it to the next generation. And one of the things that I want when I am dead and gone, that the generation behind me found me faithful. And I can hand it off to the next generation. And um, don't lose it. Keep it held high so the next generation can have it. You're a minister of God and you've been asked and required to keep the standard high. Don't lower the standard. We do nobody any good and we do an injustice when we lower that standard. No one can be saved. God is still requiring a high standard for us. So be a good minister. Point out what is true and what is false. 1 Timothy 4, 6. In pointing out these things to the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, constantly nourished on the word of faith and on the sound doctrine which, has been, which have been following. A good minister practices and teaches personal spiritual disciplines. Evan had a wonderful message a couple weeks ago. What I can remember, I had a splitting headache that day. He had a wonderful message, and the thing that he was talking about was these are practices that you need to do so that you can strengthen your walk with God, build up your walk with God. It was a powerful message, and the next few verses, verses 7 through 12, talk to us about building these disciplines, and in verse 12, I want, I want to go there for just a minute, let no one look down on you. That is key. Because inside the church and in this world, there are people that are going to try to knock you down. And that was what was happening here. They were trying to tear down the church and tear down the faith. And Paul says, let no one look down on you, but you set the pace. And that is our responsibility today. No one's going to look down on us, but we arise up and we set the pace. In 2022, in this year, in this generation, we arise to the occasion and we stand up and we're going to bring the heat and we're going to bring the example because this is the time for the church to stand up and show the world what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. This is right and this is wrong. The world doesn't see it because they are blinded by Satan and they need their eyes open to what reality is. They're going to see the sting of death if they're not warned and it is our job. Ezekiel chapter 3, Ezekiel 33, we are to warn them and if we don't warn them, their blood is on our hands. We must warn them. And if they take the warning, we've saved somebody. But if they don't, we can stand before Almighty God and say we warned them. The good minister preaches the word. We're not ashamed of the gospel. Until I come, keep attention to the public reading of Scripture. Do not neglect your spiritual gift which, which you were given, which was bestowed on you by the laying on of hands. Preach the word. It is by the word they are saved. Romans 10 said it is the word of God that will change them. It is the word of God that brings salvation. We need to preach the word. Can I be honest with you? And, and, and I bet you've been there too. I remember sitting in the pew praying that no one comes forward because I really want to get home. Tell me I'm the only one that's ever thought that. The AFC game starts at 2 o'clock, and I know some of you are antsy to get home to get the hot wings started or whatever. Some of us rush through church, and I think we rush through just to punch in the time clock, and we miss the opportunity that we've been in the presence of the Almighty. We don't come here with the anticipation of wondering what God is going to do today. We assemble today, and God is the audience. Are we actually looking to see what he's going to do? 
by the power of his word. He tells him number four is to preserve the standard until he comes back. Preserve the standard. Listen to verse 15. Take pains with these things. Be absorbed in them so that they will see your progress with all the evidence. Let the world see your progress. Take pains to see it. Verse 16, pay close attention to yourself and to the teaching. Preserve in these things. For if you do these things, you'll ensure your salvation both to you and to the one who hears you. Here's the conclusion of the matter. Don't allow yourself to be looked down on. Devote yourself to your ministry. God has called you to do something. Go do it. Don't neglect your gift. If we each do our gift, if we each do our part as the church, then the church is going to make an impact in this world around us. Diligence pays off. We're going to be, in just a few minutes, we're going to see diligence pay off. when we, we, Millions of people are going to show up to see these two football teams get together head-to-head and, and play football. And these people have been practicing all their lives. How many times has Mahomes been throwing a football through a through a a tire in his backyard, and he's been playing this scenario through his mind since he was a little kid. Tell me the truth. How many times have you played that scenario last week in your head, men? 13 seconds left, and you're the quarterback. Have you not played that scenario in your head? Of course you haven't, because you've been a Cowboys fan. You don't need 13 seconds. Of course, they had more than that and couldn't even get a playoff the couple weeks before. I'll let you know when you can speak, Kevin. <laughs> Diligence pays off. Some of you are going, well, I don't feel like I was growing like I used to grow. But when you first came to Christ, you were growing fast because it was all new. It's like digging a hole when you first come to Christ. You were digging wide. Now you're digging deep. You're not going to grow as fast, but you're growing deeper. Because now you got to take a stand. Because now you got to protect some other people. So you're digging deep. Doctrine and standards are essential. We're commanded, church, to set the example. We're commanded to set the pace. Nobody likes to play catch up. Nobody likes coming from behind to win. So regardless, regardless of opposition, be relentless. Be relentless in your pursuit of righteousness. Be relentless in your pursuit of Jesus. Be relentless in your pursuit of protecting those around you. Left up the royal banner. There's no need to lower the standard. Jesus came down to this earth so that we could rise to his level. Let's be honored to do that. All week long, I was trying to figure out a conclusion, and I was thinking even last night, Lord, I need a good conclusion for this. I couldn't come up with one, and I was frying supper last night, and we were having fried fish and french fries, a healthy supper. And I'm in there frying it last night about 6 o'clock, and Jay walks in there with his phone out. It's like glued to his hand, and he says, what's for supper tonight? I said, fried fish and french fries. He goes, uh... Is it too late to tell you I'm going to the snowball? And Vicky goes, what? I have nothing to wear. What? And she goes, what, what, what's going on? Well, a, a friend asked me to, to take her. She broke up with a, 
boyfriend and we're just going as friends. And How long have you known about this? Two weeks. Why didn't you tell me? We got to get you clothes to wear and we got to get her a flower and we got to do this. We got to take pictures and all this. Why didn't you tell me? Because of that. <laughs> and he just walks away and goes back to his room. What are you going to wear? I already picked it out. I'm wearing this blue shirt and black pants. Why is that? Because she's got a blue dress. How did you know all this stuff? We've already, we've already planned it. Well, she's coming in the house, and I'm taking her picture. And I'm taking her picture underneath that fish. We're like, why that fish? Because when I was growing up, my dad made us take a picture underneath his fish. So you're taking a picture underneath that fish. We're keeping a tradition. And she looks at me, my boy has a date. That is the excitement we need to have for Jesus. When was the last time you were that excited to share Jesus with somebody? When was the last time you got that excited for someone else's conversion story? When was the last time you realized that Jesus pursued you like that? all the way to the cross and beyond the grave, he come after you like that. When was the last time you wanted to be a part of something bigger than you? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he is rushing after you to give you a life like you've never even thought you could have. He wants to raise your standard like you never thought he could. If you're a Christian, he doesn't want you just to go through life, just to go through it. Man, he wants you to do some awesome things for him. He wants you to charge forward in faith. He wants you to bust down some things for some other people. He wants you to be excited and know that, man, today is an awesome day to be part of the church. 2022 is an awesome time to be a part of doing something great. Today is the day to join something awesome. Because soon and very soon, I believe we're going to see the return of Christ. And I want to be able to say, we kept the standard high. And look at all these people we were able to bring with us. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know him today. And I don't want you to just sit in a pew for a year. Let's charge forward in faith and let's do something with this message we have. Man, let's get excited to change the world around us for Jesus. Will you partner with me? But you gotta be willing to take a hit because the world around you is going to try to knock you down. But I got your back. Will you stand and sing with us? Sing blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. There of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His. in his blood. This is my story. This is my story.
This is the Jeffcoat family. Uh, this is Steve and Addie and Libby and uh, Lizzie. Lizzie. L I Z Z. I got Libby, so you're Libby for now. <laughs> so I'll respond to it. <laughs> uh, they live in Arapahoe, Edison area, and they've been coming since November. Let me tell you the interesting story. They've been we're going to a church up in that area, and they were getting ready to look for a new church. And they had four churches picked out. Our church wasn't even on the list. And he's a, uh, he does remodeling jobs and construction jobs. And he drove by the church, and the Spirit said, this is the church you're looking for. And they've been coming ever since. And uh, so, and uh, they said, they come for the singing they put up for, with the preaching. So uh, you all know what they're talking about. And uh, interesting, he, he has baptized both his daughters into Christ himself. What a wonderful testimony. Uh, and so they're all baptized believers. That's what we expect and need. And he took me out to lunch one day and picked my brain for over an hour. And I'm like, oh, I think I know what I'm talking about. Uh, very, knows the word of God. And they're, they're going to be great assets to our church. Welcome them to the church, folks. Glad they're with us. Glad to place in the membership with us, guys. So... And uh, where's Garrett at? Garrett Rowland is already outside, I think. So did you guys as well, did you and Garrett talk to you and, you and your wonderful wife about placing your membership with us too? There he is. What? 
Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. So, uh, uh, all right. Thank you so much for that. Um, these guys are going to be in the back. Go ahead and make your way to the back so the church can welcome you guys into the church family. Uh, before that, um, they are not twins. They are not twins. <laughs> yeah, they are. Sorry. Lucas, would you come up and pray this new family into our church? I think this is dead. This is I've licked that by now. Congratulations, by the way. We're thankful for you. Bow your heads, please. Father God, we thank you uh, so much for just new members to our family. And we thank you um, for their willingness to come up and stand up here and proclaim that uh, they want to be a part of this church. Lord, we just pray blessings for this family and uh, blessings for this whole church, so Lord, that we just continue to seek your will and, uh, and walk in your ways. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for uh, what you have planned for us, and we look forward to it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Go ahead and on your way back out there, and we'll get them a head start. Why don't you sing us out? Right. You got some message to say? Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. With all of my heart, with all of my strength. Oh. 